Dying Light the Beast is a result of Techland listening to fans' feedback for the sequel. While Dying Light 2 is by no means a bad game, it never quite reached the heights of the original title's success and disappointed a lot of fans in the process. But what is Dying Light the Beast about and how is it the game we needed? The Beast is a result of Dying Light 2's second DLC morphing into something greater. Originally based on the in-game hints and some leaked information, the second DLC was supposed to feature the return of Kyle Crane, the protagonist of the first Dying Light, as a non-playable character, while players would still be in control of Aiden. But then things changed and according to Timon Smectella, their ideas kept growing to a point that as he put it, everything exploded. Meaning that the DLC was grown so large that they needed to turn it into a fully fledged standalone game. The Beast puts us in the shoes of Kyle Crane once more, and its events takes place right after the second game's campaign outside of Villador. This means the story will take place 20 years after the original title's events. Dying Light the Beast is supposed to bridge the narrative gaps between the first and the second installment, and we will finally find the answers to some of our questions regarding the canonical endings of both games. As far as the story goes, it seems that Crane was being held captive and experimented on for over a decade. He breaks out and seeks revenge, and one of his goals in the game hovers around searching for someone named the Baron, who could be one of Crane's captors and naturally he intends to hunt him down. But we should wait and see how the story turns out in the final game. According to Smectala, Dying Light the Beast is a revenge story for Kyle Crane. Basically like old boy's premise, but with zombies. So far, everything story related sounds awesome and I can't wait to experience what surprises the game has to offer. But what about the gameplay changes and what sort of improvements should we expect from this game? The Beast is set in a new open world region called Castor Woods, which includes a densely packed town with lots of parkour possibilities, an industrial area with a rail yard, and, as the name suggests, a woodland environment that has a creepy vibe to it. So far, everything sounds really up to Dying Light's standards, and I'm really happy that they've stayed far away from the towering high buildings of the sequel's central loop area, and instead focused on a design that helps the parkour shine better without too much reliance on utilities. Also similar to Dying Light the following, the Beast sees the return of vehicles as players can now drive 4x4s, but as Techland has claimed, it's going to be a very dangerous choice to drive these vehicles since fuel is extremely scarce, the cars are vulnerable to attacks, and they can break down in the worst possible places. But that's not all, because the game now includes a new skill tree system allowing the player to upgrade the Beast-like powers. Thanks to them, Crane can now activate the Beast mode freely, and since he becomes much more powerful when the Beast mode is activated, he can perform different moves such as a ground pound that damages the nearby enemies or pick up stone blocks and throw at them. While the dev team didn't want to share more info about the beast mode at the moment, it seems like other than the increased power, it also allows Crane to traverse the world much more effectively by jumping higher and running faster. Also while the game's focus is on melee combat, guns are present too and despite being added to the sequel with an update and having some balancing issues, it seems like the guns in Dying Light the Beast are a bit different since the game focuses more on survival elements and apparently ammo will not be as generously available as it was in Dying Light 2. We can also watch the video where I discuss the issues with Dying Light 2's guns from the corner of your screen. The Beast's story mode will take around 10 hours to finish and there's roughly about 8 hours of side content available, making the overall length of the game 18 hours. In my opinion, this is a very good change compared to the sequel and I will explain it in a bit. But other than that, it seems like there are a couple of changes to some of the core systems as well. The first one is the improved weather system, which not only affects the overall mood, but the visuals too, despite running on the same technology. For example, rain doesn't start and end immediately. It starts rather slowly, could turn into a downpour, and then slowly stops and the sky will slowly clear up. Thanks to the new system, rainy and stormy weathers are more effective, which brings us to the second important change of the game, the reworked audio systems. One of the instances where the reworked audio shines is when listening to the sound of raindrops hitting surfaces in different locations. The rain can also make the impact sound dull, which is an awesome addition. In fact, this attention to granular detail overhauls the general feeling of the gameplay. But the game audio isn't the only fascinating thing about the beast, since Techland has brought back Kyle Crane's voice actor, Roger Craig Smith, to sound the character again, but this time around due to the years past and the things Kyle experienced, he's going to sound a bit different too. So far everything this studio shared about this game sounds really really good, which leads us to why Dying Light the Beast is exactly the game we needed. 
It's apparent that Techland has been listening to the fans' feedback, taking them to heart, and plans to deliver something truly worthy of the franchise's name. Most importantly, the devs are clearly passionate about creating this game, and are treating it as a fully-fledged title rather than an expansion. I believe making the Beast a standalone rather than a DLC was the best choice possible, because it shows Techland's direction for the series alongside bringing the much-needed attention to the game especially after all the pitfalls the series experienced with Dying Light 2's launch. So kudos to Techland, that's a great decision on your part. Other than that, as briefly mentioned during the video, judging by the gameplay length, it seems like the Beast further distances itself from the second game and leans closer to the original by removing some of the RPG mechanics that could increase the gameplay time with unnecessary clutter. I personally have nothing against RPG mechanics in video games, but when things turn into chore rather than fun, a video game could lose some of its integrity and it seems like that's what Techland tried to avoid here. Also, shorter gameplay time means more players would be able to enjoy the game, since nowadays, for some gamers, one of the major issues is how long video games can take to finish. Besides, a focus on melee combat, being able to use beasts like powers at will, the return of a fan-favorite character and finally getting the answer to some of our long-lasting questions is something that gets me and many other fans really excited for this game. Moreover, unlike what it might seem, Techland won't stop the support for Dying Light 2, and they will stay committed to their 5 years plan of releasing content for the game. So the Beast releasing as a standalone game does not mean that Dying Light 2 would be forgotten. Also, the Beast is completely free to those who purchased Dying Light 2's Ultimate Edition, which is amazing news, and Dying Light the Beast will be released on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X and S. We will have to wait and see how much releasing the game on the old gen hardware could affect the game, but perhaps this is the only thing about it that I don't like, and I prefer that the team would develop this game only for current gen hardware, much like Cyberpunk fans Phantom Liberty or Horizon Forbidden West's Burning Shores expansion. While we're waiting for more info such as the exact release date of the game, check this video out where I analyze the parkour in Dying Light 2. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe and tell me what you think about Dying Light the Beast. Thanks for watching, till the next one, I'm the Folk signing out.